TheRapScene.com. I am Frank 5D, and it's not often we get to talk to an artist like this, yo. Truly one of the great ones. Already in his own right. He might be an alien, uh, for all we know. People, we got great God. What up, God? Peace, peace, y'all. How you feeling, family? Um, everything is everything is going well, man. Shit's crazy for you. Congrats on the success. How, how does it feel? Um, I ain't gonna lie, I feel amazing, man. Um, just just the fact that I've been at it and doing this for so long and, and, you know, finally being able to, you know, enjoy the fruits of the labor is definitely a plus, you know what I'm saying? Being in great company as far as, you know, Pimpire, Rock Nation, Rock Marcy, Celine, Jazz, you know, Sal, having, having a great team around me, you know, it's beautiful. I can't complain one bit, man. That's what's up. And um, I can't complain about anything that I hear from you. It's, it's rare that you get one of those artists that, um, you know who everything that they kick you like so uh, mm. that's up. dope no nah, that's dope that's red you ain't lying that's red yeah that nah, that's dope i appreciate that yeah and um so this shit is almost mythology at this point but um run me the origin story explain as if you really needed to um how the god got so great man okay like as far as just dependentship and things of that nature yes Oh, uh, having knowledge yourself for one, right? Because being able to implement the lessons into the rhymes and just just being a student of so many different things and not just wanting to rap for the money or it not being financially driven is why I feel like that, you know, I excel in what I'm doing because this is true. I would be doing this if I didn't have a record deal. I didn't have a record deal for decades and I was doing it. So I just feel like that you get what you get from great gods you get because I've been very meticulous. I've been a student. I've been watching, you know, I studied the greats. So, you know, I, I, I got a little bit of piece of all the great ones, in, in, you know, that, that and embody great gods. So with that being said, and then just taking my time too, and just really wanting the people to know that, Nah, he is a little bit better than everybody. You understand? Like, he's really, really taking his time. He really, really wants y'all to know that, nah, this pen is different. So every line, every bar, I'm trying, I'm giving y'all my all. I'm trying to give you everything from the heart. You understand? We're not making up no shit. We ain't, you know, then I try not to glorify a lot that, you know, a, a lot of rappers glorify their past life. My past life is something that I, I, you know, the last, I would say, after high school, I really ain't proud of everything I did. Before high school, I had a, I had a, I had a, a decent life. You understand? High school and growing up and, you know, I had good parents. So, you know, I'm one of them people that, that, that you know, chose my own path and said, you know what? I don't really, you know, I learned how to hustle early. And I said, you know what? I watched my uncle do it. And he was my he was my mentor. He was a boxer, and he was fly, and he was the he was the man. And every other my uncle Tommy. So, you know, watching him, and then I kind of knew what he was into. So it was like I kind of you know at, at at that point it was like yeah I, I, that's what I want to do. You understand? <laughs> I want that attraction. I want I want to be revered like that. So, you know, Word but up. yeah. You, you, you've talked about um, that. That's a whole lot of the meaning behind the mask, and yeah. um, which a whole lot of um, you know, artists who you know get get behind any mask talk about. You know, connect with the music, not not with not. Yeah. With the and um, again, um, how how does the mask take on its own identity? I mean, yeah. So so just to elaborate a little bit for me, the mask is the like like you said, it's just. You can get consumed and engulfed in so much when it comes to an artist. And when you get in, when you get involved with who he messing with and what kind of car he's driving, what kind of jewelry he got, and what house he live in, and all that, the music will end up taking a back seat to the actual artistry and the talent. And that's why I put the mask on, because it was like, yo, I just want them to just judge these bars, man. If, if that's all you got to go on is the lyrical ability, then I can't lose. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah that, that's why you winning. Um, yeah. so even if even if somebody try to put a kink in my armor, 
whatever you, whatever they, whatever you, whatever they got to say, or they, whatever they trying to put a kink in, don't got nothing to do with this lyrical mastery that you get in when you listen to the music. It ain't got nothing to do with it. I seen a couple, I seen a couple cats. You know, I'm trying to trying to trying to throw ice at the sun, but they, you know, they, you know, you're bringing up things that don't matter. Lou, let him in. They're bringing up things that don't matter. You understand? It ain't got nothing to do with music, Jack. It ain't got nothing to do with your favorite. Getting his ass kicked on these features. It ain't got nothing to do with these with these records that I'm putting out. That ain't got nothing. You know, that ain't nobody else in life did those type of records. Like you know, they say. You know, so yeah, man. Um, we'll, we'll get to that too, man. Um, yeah. shit, you you got many, you got as many bars as 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 masks. How, how many masks you think you got? Man? <laughs> um, I don't know. Where. At this point, I probably got. I lost a I lost a whole bundle of masks, man. So at this point, I probably got a few hundred. I mean, not a few hundred. Pardon me, like 40, 50 masks. Okay. Yeah, I'll be having I'll be having you know different people put them together. Mama love my you know because my the mask thing for me is I like this. I might cut this up when I'm done with it and turn it into a mask, or have my right. mother cut it up, or have one of the you know uh, one of the people that I'll be having sewing Tina. It's a lot of couple you know I got a couple of different source mask sources, and now people been sending them to me, so I'm just really collecting them. That's what's up. You got to commission one, man. You got to get like the. You gotta get with it. something. You gotta you gotta turn yay out, man, for real. Like you, he think he the man with the mask. You gotta. Yeah, it's funny too that you say that because I wasn't the first one. Let's be clear, but I just feel like after I did it and after I, I you know, and the way that I was performing and the way that I was doing it, and then never let up off it, just kept it on. I did start seeing a lot of masks come into play after that. And you know, you it, it, it's something to say when when people get behind it. You know, every I, I hate I hate how people call it the shiesty because it's not the shiesty. You know, it, it honestly just it just a, a way to connect with the music. You know, beyond and and this goes far out of hip hop. You know, the late great Doom. Would you ever would you ever send anybody out on stage like they <laughs> like, like Doom used to do? Mm, I thought about it. I, I ain't gonna lie. I would be lying if I said I I wouldn't think about sending my man to. Uh, but now nah, I wouldn't do it because you know why? I'm gonna tell you why. The the, the fans that I talk to, I mean the, the fans that it's in my DM, I talk to them. They know what my voice sound like, they know, they know my aura. I don't even think that it's nobody that could go and play that role and and, and, and really and I don't want to get over on them because they really be behind me. You understand? So That's I would I wouldn't even want to cheat the fans like that. Now I'm gonna just get yeah. myself together, go get this passport and, and get on the road the right way. That's what's up, man. Well, well, thank you again. Like, and again, it, it extends beyond hip hop. You know, just, just the idea of connected with the music and, and not the person, especially nowadays with 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 all the blogs and and how everything goes on. And you know, they want to latch on to everything else but the music. You know, the music. Yeah. I've talked to so many people that that that's happening to, and, and yeah. I'm just it, it's really good the lane that you got. And that again, that that's the reason why you're winning. Um, You've been all over the place, man. Residing and 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 of course building your rep and your name. Where where's where do you think treated you the best? Syracuse. Syracuse. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and you still you still there? You repping Syracuse? Still, I'm still in the news. And I would say that Syracuse treated me the the best because I got the well, let me not say treated me the best, but I got the best memories in Syracuse. Okay. My fondest memories, my, my my you know, some of the greatest accomplishments happened on North Salina, 726 North Salina, you know, and, and then we had a studio on the east side. We had a couple of studios all around the city, but just the people that I met and the brothers and the camaraderie that um that, that I received and the love too, because you know, the, the I never really I never really ran into no hate in the cues. Um and my brother Thump Mendoza, uh, may he rest in peace. He was a firecracker. So to to be to be so closely associated with somebody like him and everybody on every side of the town still love you is something to say in itself. Cause he was he was different. You understand? Mm-hmm. So even if they didn't, even if they didn't per se, they would never tell me they didn't like him when they had a problem with him. But I would know about these different neighborhood beefs. 
but I never got put in the middle of that. And they know that was my man, 50 grand. You understand? Right. So that, that, that right there was genuine, you know, and it's still like that to this day. That's what's up. Shout out to Syracuse, man. I've never been. I, I've been to Buffalo. I've been to Niagara Falls. I've been to um, Rochester. I, I, I've never been to Syracuse. Yeah, you got to come to the Cuse, man. Live from the Three Gun Five, man. That's what you yeah. Word up. Um, you you talk about geographical location not yeah. being anything, not being a part of um getting to your dreams. Tell right. me more about that. I just used to feel like, um, or people would say to me, Damn, what you, you still in the queues? You still in the queues? Cause you know, I lived in Rochester, but I lived in I lived in Rochester for a couple years, but I've been in Syracuse for 23 years now. You understand? I've been in Syracuse longer than I lived anywhere. Where? Like in my whole life. I've never been nowhere for this long. So people used to say to me, like, damn, you still over there? Like, damn, bro, like it, you you need to you could you could blow if you move to Atlanta. I bet you would blow if you moved to, back to the city. I bet you would blow if you moved to LA. And that's just not true, man. And I don't want the young guys to feel like that's true because everything we made happen, we made happen right from Syracuse. I mean, we was getting on the road, and we was and we would take our show on the road, and we would get on the you know go to mixtape stores, and you know back when back when you had to put gas in the car, and you had to go to MOS in Harlem and buy blanks boxes and boxes of blank CDs. So we would run around in Cleveland, Maryland, uh, Connecticut. We would go everywhere. But the the concept was born in Syracuse, New York. Mm. Shout out my brother, Louis Vuitton. You know what I'm saying? We sat down on my on my floor and, or we might've been sitting on the pool table. I can't really remember. He probably remember. But uh, we came up with that concept here. So, and we took that concept and we was, you know, we was known everywhere. So don't think that you got to be, you know, in L.A. and Atlanta. Yeah, you may have a it may happen faster. You may have a you know, it, it, you may have a better chance, but you can do it through determination, dedication and discipline from anywhere. Word you just got, it just got to be what you really want to do. And if you really want to do it, you're going to find your way to it. Motivation and inspiration. Thank That's you. Great. God. Appreciate that. Um, more about geographical location, and I, I love to ask artists this: mm -hmm. Where would hip hop have started if it didn't start in New York? Mm. I would say L.A. To Los Angeles. Yes. That's um. That's one of the um. That's 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 one of the biggest answers that I get. Is that the most common answer. Yeah, that that is honestly, and and I'm born and raised in Inglewood, California. You know, oh, I'm very okay. familiar with with why it would have happened, and you know, mm -hmm. but I kind of think it would have been somewhere close to to New York. Like honestly, if if not upstate, like somewhere ancillary, like um DC or or Philly or Jersey. Honestly, I was, I was gonna say Philly. I was gonna say Philly, but I would I, I think I would say. I would probably say LA just because of like my Midwest ties, right? And my Midwest background. All I listened to coming up was, well, not all, like like the first seven, eight years of me be really, really being in the rap, I was on Spice One, uh, Sebo, uh, Mac Maw, E40, mm -hmm. so uh, MC8, Too Short, I was on all that. So, um, yeah, you know, NWA, all that. So that's why I would say, and then it's, I feel like LA, it's just so many more rappers out there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Maybe now. Huh? You know, I, I wouldn't even say now. You think it's more rappers in LA than it is in New York? In Cali, period? Like Cali overall? Well, no, LA. Oh, LA. Nah, nah, but I was I, I, I misspoke. I meant to say like Cali in general. But okay, and you did I, just, I mention, LA, you did just mention all those Bay Area artists yeah. too. So I yeah, yeah, I guess overall, yeah. I mean it's a way bigger state. I, I could rope that. Yeah. yeah. I'm I'm thinking way back in the day though, because you because you know I grew up with all those um with all those artists that you were okay. talking about. But for some reason I always gravitated towards this your sound. You know, mm -hmm. in the New York sound, and I've honestly always been a little bit envious not being able to grow up around, you know, where it all started and where it was right. really going on. Because I'm an old head, you know, right. my I'm I'm 
you know, I'm not really into the, I'm not really in tune with all of the new stuff, but you know, working with the rap scene, everything, um, everything comes to me. So I, I kind of dig that. And, um, but yes, I, I, I do think it would have been somewhere close to, um, close to, close to New York. Um, close to New York. Yeah. Yeah. You know, most deaf when he, when he was called most deaf, he described hip hop as like some giant living in the hillside, coming <laughs> down, scared of townspeople, you know? Right. And um, that's kind of what you are, yeah. And and honestly, it's almost otherworldly how you attack your artistry. And mm. I, I, I do mean attack it. Like, give me some insight into the creative process and where the fuck are those bars coming from? Um, <laughs> it, You know what? It really depends on the production, right? I mean, to you, it might seem like I do that on every record, right? But... It really just it depend on the production and it really depend on what I'm going through. See, like when I wrote a lot, when I write a lot of them records, I'm probably I'm, I, nine times out of ten I'm really going through some nonsense and I'm mad about something or I'm feeling away. So you get that aggression, <laughs> you know. I see you sh shaking your head like it be sounding like that, right? Like I really be going through or just you know disappointed in in, in certain situations and certain people. So it's just like. Let me get this. Let me let me get it all out in, in, in these bars. But the process is this. Somebody send me the beat. I know within the first four or five seconds. Oh, yeah, I'm on that. If I listen to that beat and I turn and I plug it in, plug it up and I throw that beat in the Pro Tools, it usually take me about 20 minutes. If I could get the first two, three bars out as soon as I hear the beat after that, it's over. Um, and then I'm going to go bar for bar. So a lot of people be like, damn, like I remember Rock Marcy told me, say, son, you don't waste a bar. Like you, <laughs> this is like combos. Like you ain't wasting a bar. And that's because I lay it down bar by bar. That that that's honestly what I hear. You you told you told paper chasers that the Larry Bird verse on Rock's new project with Marciology actually. <laughs> Project, was the first verse that took you longer than 15 minutes to, to, put, to come up with. Right. But you didn't reveal how long it took you. How long did it take you? It took, okay, first of all, let me be honest with you. It took me, it took me about an hour on that verse, 45 minutes. It was me, Sammy G, my god brother, Sammy G, and uh, Just One. It took me about an hour, man, because I really, because the loop was funny. It was, and the loop was falling on the fifth bar. And, you know, I'm used to f landing my punch on the fourth bar. So I had to be clever and, and talk my way through Larry Bird. Shout out Rock Bossy. Shout out Knowledge. But I had to, I had to, I had to talk. You know, that's why you hear me saying, let me give y'all time to digest. And I'm saying, you know. I've been nice since Iceberg made history. And then I and then I talk a little bit in there because that fifth ball was tearing me up. And I actually wrote that verse twice. This is what Rock just reminded me. I did that, I did the verse one time in the in the studio with Sammy and Just. The second time I did it, I did it at my house. And I switched up a couple bars and you know, because Rock lost it the first time. He he couldn't find the uh he couldn't find the session. So I ended up doing it again, but it definitely took me a whole hour, like literally an hour. Yeah. Word up. That, that, that's that's tight. Thank you. Um, what would you say was your shortest verse that you ever that you ever come up with? Huh. Or what's the least they amount all, of time? They all, they all take about 15 minutes. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because because mind you, I'm engineering myself. <laughs> So I'm sitting at the computer and I'm and I'm and I'm pushing and I'm pushing record. I'm recording myself. I'm thinking of the bar, thinking of the bar. So when you gotta when you gotta make up something or you thinking about or, or you think about something that, that that you probably never did in your life, it's gonna take you longer. Me, I'm just recollecting. So it don't take I, this shit is right here. This shit is in my frontal lobe. All these hustle stories, all of these stories is I'm just recollecting on something. That it don't. It ain't, I ain't making it up. I'm just going in my in my hard drive and saying, let me get that piece, let me get that piece, let me get that piece, let me get that, and, and I'm putting them together. It ain't like I gotta come up with it out of out the clear blue sky. Yeah. It, it's a beautiful thing. Um the God is great, y'all. Um <laughs> straight up and down. Yeah. Um with the, thanks for releasing that that verse from from the late great 
P from Prodigy, let rest in peace. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, on, on, on the Wolf season. Of yes. course, with you and Joe, with Joey Majors. How long do you think it took him to come up with that verse? Who, Prodigy? Yeah. Probably like a half hour, 50, 20, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Let, let's let's play that game. How how long for the verse? What you got? Um, how long did Rock's verse take on Larry Bird? <laughs> so Rock, Rock is very meticulous. I've only been in the studio and watched him lay a verse down one time. He was in the studio with Premier the night that I signed my deal. He was writing. Then we then we had a conversation, and we and him and knowledge was at the, the day was building, and then we and then he would write a little more. Then he would go in there and talk to Primo and Parks, and he would come back and write a little more. You know what I'm saying? He might blow a little trees and write a little more. So I, I would say that verse, if I had to guess, I would say 45 minutes, maybe something like that. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, how long did Rakim take to write paid in full? <laughs> I don't know, but it, I, it's as it, it, well as well written as that was. Very well written. Very well written. Like 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 man, I I would say an hour. We got it. We got to get a god sixty minutes on that. Like those verses that he was doing, like in like get up, like all of them. Them planet Earth was my place of birth, born to be the sole controller of the universe. When you get to talking like, but you know what? He might have been swift too. Like he might have, he, he might have been just pulling. So mm -hmm. I don't know. A God would know a God. Yeah. Uh, how how long did Buster Rhymes take to write on that Chris Brown joint with Lil Wayne? The one with the, with the fast. <laughs> that. Now I think that's second nature for the God. <laughs> I think I think Bus is one of them 10, 15 minute uh you know what I'm saying? Because I feel like that that's just I feel like he's so comfortable with that and he done mastered so many different styles. I don't really feel like you understand? Yeah, uh huh. I, I do I do hear what you're saying. Um, how long did it take Nas to write his verse on, on main sources live at the barbecue? Oh man. <laughs> I don't know, but you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna ask Jungle. <laughs> Shout out Jungle. I'm gonna ask him. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask him how long it takes son to be writing when he be writing them records. Wow. I was, I would, but to answer the question, I would say 45 minutes. Huh. 45. I think I heard now say that though. Some that that uh, it be taking him like he he do it. He he put the verse down, go home, perfect it, come back, re-record it, yeah. and yeah. How long do you think it took me to write my verse on classics and such? <laughs> How long? It took 20 minutes. 20 <laughs> minutes? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I'd say it was more like 30, 40. 30, 40? That's hard. You ain't heard my knocks. <laughs> How long did Greg Nice to take take to write his verse on Dwick, on Gangstar's Dwick? Uh... A great nice, a great. Oh, yeah. I see, you ain't gotta tell me. I know all them ball for ball. <laughs> no, that's it. That's it. That's it. Rock for free. That's it. That's it. He didn't write anything, right? Is that what I'm you thinking on that. that? I never heard that. Let uh, I, maybe I, I could be mistaken. You know, y'all, y'all look that up for me and please comment if I'm wrong. Red alert and kick a pre. He, he might have been in there just. He might have been doing that. He might have been in there just getting busy. Because, you know, I, and, and and honestly, when I heard that, I don't know how long ago I heard that, I, like, listened back, you know, or I thought back, you know, to every, because one of my favorite joints is, um, you know, uh, now, oh, yeah. Hey, yo, kicking with your rhymes like a fortune teller. Had a dog by the name of Oyella. I, I can't place the name of record, but, um, you can just hear that you didn't write all of this down, <laughs> but it's some of the most classic shit that I've ever heard. You know, um, uh, uh. okay. Moving on, um, Nelly's first verse on Hot and Hurt. Uh, I think my man Cardan wrote that. Oh, oh shit. Okay. <laughs> How long did it take Cardan to come up with that? Cardan is a he's a slickster. He probably took him twenty minutes. That boy Cardi is is too crazy. <laughs> Uh, I can see. Yeah, that. I never knew that. Right. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, give me um Big's first verse on kicking the door. How long would that take? He rain on the top short. I, yeah, I think probably an hour or two. He, he Big seemed like he he was really you know he 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 probably yeah I probably say an hour or two. Mm -hmm. Come up with them because you know why I say an hour or two for Big because. He was in there with Puff doing them records. So Puff is a, you know how meticulous he is. Change this, do that. Change yeah. this, do that. Yeah. You understand? He like what Dr. Dre is when it comes to mixing the record. I can see that. They going to put you, 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 that motherfucker better be perfect. So, you know, I, I can see what the dad would probably might have took, took, took the guard a little time. And Big had the chops to do it too. Um, yeah. Give me um trying to trying to wrap this up here. Wanda on 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 Hurricane Starang, the first verse. Oh man, what you know? Uh Starang. Got that ass up like a poster. Got uh, yeah, I know what Shout out Starang. Uh 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 shout out the whole boot camp click, man. You mm -hmm. know, that's how you get God brothers. When you hear me say God brothers, my God brothers, uh -huh. that comes from Coco Brothers. Of course. You know, yeah. Tech is like my tech is like my brother, man. Shout out tech and still, but yeah, um, see, they was getting they 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 was blowing that 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 Lyndon and Pyle that that good old tree for back in the day. So they probably was doing them verses quick. Mm -hmm. I would say they you know they was going to LP in, in, in Brownsville. You know, Lyndon and Pyle was a famous a famous famous weed spot in Brownsville. Okay, okay. and uh, they had the best of the best. And I know that they was twisting up that, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, they probably was putting them lyrics down quick. Okay. Um, Jada on We Gonna Make It. First verse. I seen Jada. Uh, Jada puts it, I seen him do his thing personally. So it he like he he he's in that 15 minute range. And he don't really be punching a lot either. Like he gets in there, like, yeah. My man Louis Vuitton is like that, man. He, you know, so me, I'm a punch, I'm a punch in and I'm gonna make sure every, but you know, like when I'm recording Lou, he he wanna do it all the way through perfect. So if we gotta do it 13 times or 10 times or five times, he wanna be able to hurr, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, okay. Um last but not least, um your favorite verse from you yourself, great guy. Okay. How long did it take you? My favorite verse. So my favorite verse is coming out on my new EP. Um, and the record is called Sins of a Father. And it's produced by JX Samurai, my nephew, right? And that verse took me 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. Like 20 minutes. Yeah. Okay. And that record is just about my my, my son and, and you know, the, the trials and tribulations that he's going through and you know what I felt was my part in leading him, or or him seeing me do things that he shouldn't have been privy of, or hearing conversations he shouldn't have been privy of, which may have contributed to him wanting to do some of the things that he did as as a child. So that song is very personal, and yeah, I, I took a little extra time on that one. I would probably say 20, 20 30 minutes on that one. Can't wait to hear it. That's what's yeah. Up. Yeah, now that one is special. That I'm actually thinking about leading off with that record. Uh, my EP come out entitled "Great God" on May seventh, so I'm thinking about leading off with that one. Word up, uh, yeah. Um, I, I, you know, I am Frank Five D here on the rap scene, so I know we are gonna hear it before anybody else. Nah. Yeah. Oh, okay, now I'm gonna send it to you when we get done. I, I really want to hear just because you're a, a real supporter and a real fan. I really want you to hear that. Like, it's it's one of those. I, I send it to you. Send it over, man. You know, um, right up, abundant. Um, yes. Okay, okay, great guy. Let's get serious here. Mm -hmm. I've, I've been doing this thing. I, I told you in a previous conversation. I've been doing this for a while, um, and I've never ever asked anybody this, but I'm about to ask it, and I need a serious answer. Copy. You ready? Yeah. What should I ask you? Mm. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh man, what should you ask me that, that that nobody ever asked me? Maybe I don't know. Jesus, what should right. I ask? Sure, yes. What, what, uh, what should I, ask? I, I think that you should ask me what uh, what I think is going to happen when I do take the mask off. 
Okay, so um, we talked about the match just a little bit, a little bit ago, and um, you know how the connection really, you know, the connection to the music is what it is. And of right. course, I've heard you speak about how you know you can you can roam, you know, when you actually take it off, and you know, people like you can you can actually live a life outside right. of you know the the magic that you have going on and the notoriety that that's popping and, and all your emotion that you have right now. Um, what's gonna happen when you actually you know do reveal it and take the mask off? Or what what are people gonna say? At that point, the people are gonna say, "Oh, now I get it." Mm. Now it all makes sense. Anything that, that, that we thought that he may have been embellishing on, he wasn't. Okay. Okay. Damn, I should have knew. Damn, why I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. That's what they're going to say. Damn. Okay. Now it makes sense. Now it makes sense. And then they're going to say, that man never gave up, man. Damn. Mm -hmm. I got I to gotta admire his... His, his 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 drive and his perseverance and his and his willingness to keep going after all these years. If we don't respect nothing else, we gotta respect him for that. I want to start a timer right now, like because I've heard you say that you were never gonna um, take the mask off. We gonna we gonna just start a timer. And, uh, <laughs> yep, until you take the mask off, and that's what it is. Can we get an estimate? Uh. I would say, I would say uh, maybe two, three years, two, two years. years. Mm -hmm. You know, it's after after a couple, after I put out a couple albums, after I put out put out a couple more. Probably two years. I'm gonna take it off because in two years it's gonna be stadiums packed. Mm -hmm. The things that I do that's a little bit different than everybody that do in my genre. I know how to really make records. Like I know how to make big records without compromising the sound. And I think that there's a lot of cats in my that's in this arena that they 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 you can tell that they're trying to make big records. They that they you understand? But I know how to make a record big enough, but it don't alienate the people that have supported me and latched on to me for the grittiness and the and the realness from the beginning. You know, there's a reason why we're having these conversations. Yeah. And and that thank you. That that was a that was an excellent question to ask you. Like straight up and down, like word up. Thank you, Greg. Guy. Um, tell me, tell me a little bit about about the bars documentary. So the bars documentary is about all of the cats from upstate New York that's getting busy, so that the people don't just think, okay, well, it's just this group or it's just that group that's getting busy. No, bars is the A and R's handbook. Okay, go get this young boy. Go get this young boy from Buffalo. Go get him from Syracuse. Go get him from Rochester. Go get him from Albany. Go get him from Schenectady. You understand? Go get him from Auburn. It's just, it's just, it's really my way to give back and say, you know what? Now that I got the light, let me shine. Let me put everybody on. Why? Let me put everybody on. That's my duty. I gotta, I gotta help build legacy for other people. Because nobody did that for me except Rock Marcy. Anybody else I ever been around, they wanted to put me in the, in the closet somewhere. And, and, you know, they didn't really want to shine the light. So now that I got the chance to shine the light, now that, I, now that I know the people was watching, it's literally my duty to put some other people on and put them in the light. That's what's up. So right. that's, that's what the Bars documentary represent. Buffalo, Albany, Rochester, Syracuse, Bars. So it's not just the top guys. This 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 making noise is not just the stove guards and the Bennies and the West Sides and the Conways. It's those guys plus the babies that's coming up, plus the cast this 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 that's working, the producers, even the radio personalities from uh from all over upstate New York, like the Sierra Monets in Rochester. You understand? It's 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 everybody, man. It's just like nah, we got a lot going on up here. I keep hearing people say, oh, man, upstate New York is over for upstate New York. That that thing is kind of dying down. Mm, Ain't no way. No. Nah, it's gonna die. I, I, we can't let it die no time soon because Syracuse didn't even really get its run yet. And there's too many young boys that's fired. And we going to put all of them in the forefront. That's what's up. As soon as I can get them to stop beefing with each other, we're going to kick the door in. Hmm. I'm going to bring them young boys to the forefront one by one. Hmm. 
That, that, yeah, that's good to hear. And it's needed, uh, of course, because there is so much talent. I, I'm in tune with a, with a with a bunch of them up there. We just did a um, we just did a write up for Pretty Bully. She, okay. she's, she's from Buffalo. We um, I, I'm in tune with with year with, with Jordan. Year Jordan. He, he's from uh, I think he's from Rochester. Um, yep, yep. Um, a bunch of people. Akil Ali. I, I'm 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 in tune with him. I think he's from Buffalo also. Um, so yeah, it's straight up and down, man. And I see what you're doing with the God Squad too. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah keep, keep keep it up. I, I can't wait to see. You. Of course, I know we are gonna see see the documentary before anybody else again. No, um, <laughs> yeah. you, you're, you're at the head of another project that deserves just as much shine. Sorry, Mama. Go. Oh man, so Sorry, Mama is something that I feel like every young man needs to see. Sorry Mama is uh, an idea that, that I came up with and Louis Vuitton came up, Armand Perry and my, my partner Rich, uh, Richard Shamaro, my, my, my business partner, man, my main man G. And, and Sorry Mama is a documentary in which we highlight the pain and the struggles that the mother, particularly mother goes through when these children go to jail. Because, you know, we're so selfish as sons and daughters, and we don't really think about nine times out of ten before we do something. You know, one lapse of judgment can send you somewhere you don't want to be for 20 years. And we don't think about Mom Dukes. We don't think about her getting patted down on the visit, having to drive five hours, having to get three jobs, having to put money on the phone, having to scale back her lifestyle because you fucked up. Just putting her down as an emergency contact moms like I, I used to do some work in the jails man and I, I I that shit would just break my heart like I could not imagine putting my moms through that yeah man and, you know like come here bro my, my bro just my bro Louis just came home from uh doing 22 years and that's what that's what we doing man it's my main man Louis Vuitton it's good bro and uh up, Louis? Talk, talk to them a little bit about sorry mom a little bit man like the, the importance of Okay, the importance of Sorry Mama is for young young men who went off. We highlighting the mothers who go through a lot of pain that get forgotten when their sons go off to prison. And we don't look at those mothers as being victims. We look at the victim's family, those mothers as being the only victims exclusively. We forget about the mothers of the uh, young men who go to prison for long, lengthy sentences, 25 years, 30 years, 40, 50 years. And we never think about what they go through while we in prison, the burden they take on from the community uh, for, for uh, standing by their children. The embarrassment, yeah. My mother is one of those mothers. So I know this uh, story up close and personal. I yeah. did 22 years for a murder. Yeah. And now I'm back. Welcome and, home, sir. Yes, yes. In this in this project, sorry, mama, is something that we've been thinking about for years. Right. For a long time. Right. And I was so fortunate that he was able to get it started right before I came home. And here we have it. And, and we're putting it together. And we're getting these stories out from these mothers. We're getting them interviewed. And they're telling their stories. And we're getting a whole nother side of these young children that we uh, that we demon as animals who, who some of them have went down the wrong path. Some of them been uh, been in the wrong place for a long time. But the mothers are still the victims. Yeah. This is still a woman who may have been a single parent who had to take on the burden of being a mother and a father to a young man who they cannot teach to right. be a young man. Mm. But she still took on a role. She still took on the role. We can't forget those mothers. Shout out to them, you know. Yeah. Shout yeah. out, especially man. And then so, oh, yeah. What we want to do is, if I if I was in sixth, fifth grade, and I saw this documentary, and I say, "Damn, this mama crying like that," and she's speaking about her heart being broken and not knowing that she's gonna be alive when he come home, that's damaging. So I, if the young guys could see that, even if we, we can't save the world, obviously, but if we could save a few of these young brothers, that's the goal. And he might say, man, I don't never want my mother to feel like that. That's the goal of Sorry Mama. 
Straight up and down. Yeah, thank you. And uh, again, def definitely needs just as much attention as the as the bars documentary. Um, and I, I've I've seen the trailer. Um, you know, rest in peace. You know, and prayers up to to those survived the the mothers and the rest of the family. Yeah. Um, you know, we'll we'll definitely save the spoilers. But um, can you can you justify the juxtaposition between that message and of sorry, mama, and uh, you know, a lot of what you kick in your music. So um, that's one reason why I stopped doing music for so long, right? Because just the just the burden that, that, that falls on my shoulders is that, man, you know better, right? You know better. So you should be, you should be, first of all, I shouldn't even really be doing music like that. And, and then especially not doing music, talking about the things I'm talking about. But guess what? This is how I justify the music that I make. You have to be from it. When you from it and you talk to a kid, they understand it. Mm. They may not, they, they, people are judgmental. So they're going to judge the source instead of the message. Only when you get wise, you understand that you judge the message and not the source. But the wow. young boys judge the source. So if I tell them don't do this and I did it and they know that I did it and they've been hearing about it, they're going to listen to me. Now, I would be in violation if I continue to feed them that poison. Yeah. And that's why you get records like Sorry Mama, Sins of a Father. You get the records to where it's like, yeah, I did that, but this is where I'm at in life now. And that's why when and that's why when, when, when certain people try to nitpick, you talking about a, a life that from 20 years ago. Like somebody actually got in my DM and said, hey man, uh, where all them bricks you be talking about? As if I was supposed to put one on my story or something. <laughs> you understand? Like I was supposed to go on my story and say, here it go. Hey, I mean, man, you got you got to send me one of them leftover bricks, dude. Uh, I, might got, I might got a 62 I can send you. <laughs> them bricks. No, that, you. That, so I, I'm talking about I'm talking about the snow day, dude. Yeah, dude, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, I need one of those to add to my collection, dude. For real, that that was some fire marketing. Um, and and of course, the Snow Day project definitely lent to that creative approach of the marketing. Can we look forward to more packaging like that? You know, oh, man. when you see this next packaging, if they was in love with the Snow Day packaging, this new one, oh man, it's something else. It's that shit was hard, man. I, honestly, hats off. Um, thank, thank you again, Greg. God, that that's what we want to see. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, of course, that that was um one of the driving forces to to you and in the Pimpire deal, you right. know. Um, under of course the legend who we mentioned, Rock Marciano. The chemistry is amazing. Mm -hmm. How does he, how does he inspire you? Oh, he inspires. First of all, he inspires me because of who he, his aura. How he deals with other people that's what's inspiring to me but over all of the music like he definitely of course he's a he's an incredible artist but the way he deals with people and the way he the way he 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 gravitated to me was inspiring because very rarely do you get somebody that's at the pinnacle and that's really revered as the king and they say oh well you know what I, I, let me let me let me grab somebody else and bring them in this light. Hmm. People don't do that. People don't do that. They might do that when they when they when they on their way down, but not when they sitting on the throne. They don't that don't usually happen like that. Hmm. So just just the way that he deal with equality and him wanting for his brother what he would want for himself, and that's that's inspiring for me. In in, in terms of the music, um. The, the the way he put those bars together <laughs> and the slickery and you understand like you gotta listen to that rock rock got them lines you gotta listen to four or five times man I mean I'm he just put out the Marciology I'm I'm still listening to the Elephant Man's Bones honestly yeah. I, I'm, I'm still listening um th that's dope though honestly and that what you said about you know how he deals with people that's some of those intangible lessons that you know right. we need from from those greats. Right. Right, right, right. What would you say that he is inspired by from you? Um, I would have. I, I mean, I could. I could quote something that he told me. Um, 
just I think that I, you know what one thing that I can say he may be inspired about is how is how fast I put together the records and, and how much I record. Yeah, that's what I would say. That's what's up, tight. Because he because you know I, I I send them when I do records I send them to him and he be like damn bro you in a zone over there you understand you in a zone like three four records a day like this is getting ridiculous like when is you gonna stop <laughs> yeah. Um, you grab that charger from behind the bed for me. Pardon, you, told, you told Mike Powers, um, shout out to Mike Powers. Shout out Mikey P. Yeah. You told Mike Powers that you never smoked a drink. Never in life. Why not? Um, initially it was because of, uh, you know, the 5% nation in, in, in Islam. Um, after that, it was the, the response that I would get from the women and mm. other people. Not not just women, but but for a while it was the women, and it was like, you don't drink or smoke, like that's a maid, like ain't no way. And they would be so uh need the other part didn't go on the wall. They uh they would be like, yo, they love you know, they just couldn't believe it. So then it was like, okay, I'm in my 20s, still never did it. Now I'm in my 30s, I still never did it. All right, I'm in my 40s. All right, it's too late. Like, why would I do it now? It don't even it wouldn't even make no sense for me to do it at this point. Same with me and tattoos, man. Like everybody, I ain't got a tattoo. You ain't got a tattoo. You ain't got no tattoos. No, not one. And I ain't gonna get one now. Hey, um, I don't have a tattoo either. Straight of it now. Not yeah. one. I never wanted to. I never wanted to be. So, so what's your tattoo story? Why you ain't got one? Um, crazy man. I honestly just because simply because I never knew what what was gonna be permanent on me. You right. know, I, I've I've had plenty. I, I use you know. I've, Again, have a background in shooting, videography, and photography. Shot a few tattoo parties. Some of my compensation was whatever I wanted. Wherever right. I wanted, however big I wanted it. And I'm looking through designs, and I'm looking at what people are getting as I'm shooting, and I just can't come up with what's going to stick. And right. So, yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I do find that hard to believe, man, that, you know, um, have you ever done coke? <laughs> If I ain't never smoked a Newport, I definitely ain't grad. I definitely ain't sniffing no lime. <laughs> you ever done no mushrooms? Nah, never nothing, man. No E, no Molly, no Zans. Nah, no uh -uh. Maybe maybe some Nyquil. That was about the harshest drug. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. great. I, I really got to be hurt to take any of that type of shit. Like, oh uh, man, and I don't even mess with that. Too crazy. So yeah. But yeah, I'm again. I'm I'm. Uh, just like the elephant man's bones, man, I'm still playing snow day. Um, thank you again, and then you sent, you got to send me one of them leftover bricks. I know, I know, you still got a few laying around. Yeah, I got, I got one. Yep. Yeah. I also like to ask artists about their physical music collection. What you got? Oh man, booklet. So if we want to go back to the CD booklets, mm -hmm. <laughs> I got a lot of knives in there. I got a lot of G rap in there. A lot of rock Kim in there. Some iced tea in there, um, you know, all of the East Coast greats is 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 in there. That's that's like my that's like my manual. You understand? Because I right. that's what I listen to when I'm on the road. If I'm not listening to to seventies R and B, sixty eight to 70, 72, 70, 74, You know that when that that fire. If I'm not listening to that, I'm either dead silent in the car or I'm playing some old. You know, CNN or, or or they forced my hand, Cormega or some tragedy, Gaddafi or half a mil. I might be listening to Tough Guys or something. You know, right. yeah. That's what's up, man. I got I got a huge vinyl collection. You know, oh, yeah. Probably over, probably over um thousand thousand individual pieces, singles, mostly '90s hip hop. A lot of that '70s soul that I um inherited from my pops. Um, gotcha. but me and my brother started collecting. My brother used to used to be on the ones and twos. Um, okay. So we started collecting, uh, I want to say 1992. Gotcha. Um, and while it's died down now, we've we've got tons of stuff, you know. And um, yeah, but he's got a bunch of those booklets too, them CDs. And I'm trying oh, to get them from him so I can I can go through them and, and you know review yeah. them. Um, yeah, he's got a, he's got all the um, the early G unit mixes. The, the oh, yeah. official ones, yeah. He's got him um, a bunch of clues. He's got um, a bunch of stuff. We 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 got a lot of uh, what you just named on, on singles and forty fives right in there. Yeah, you, <laughs> you get the snow day vinyl. 
I I did not know. Um, uh, again, I, I was I was looking at at one of those um at one of those bricks, man. Um, um, <laughs> um there there there's a bunch on the list that that I do need to cop too. Gotcha. You know, still vinyl is expensive nowadays, yo. Nah, vinyl, yeah, it ain't no joke. Yeah, um, but but that is one that I would love to add. You know, you could just send that right. <laughs> no, um, the, we, we trying to wrap up here. We've been on for a minute. Put us so, on quick. Put put us on to Sammy Jesus, man. Oh my goodness. So let me tell you about Sammy Jesus, man. Oh, so Sammy Jesus is. I only heard one person in life that was better than Sammy Jesus, right? And that's Stump Mendoza. But and they happen to be brothers. <laughs> They happen to be blood brothers. Runs in the family. It's it's fuck. I'm tired of them both. <laughs> like Sammy, one of them dudes that when he get the rhyme, you can't have no fitted hat on. You're gonna toss your shit across the street. You <laughs> might spike it. You might pull your front of your hairline the fuck out. He, and he just gets better and better and better. Like he he amazing man. He just actually handed in his whole EP. We are gonna put it out. Uh, this summer, you're going to also be able to catch Sammy Jesus on the God Squad compilation. We're going to put out a compilation out in Louis' home. Uh, so, you gonna, you you know, we're going to flood you with Sammy G. He, but he is, he just, a, I, don't, this, I don't even know how to describe him or them. It just, it's just, he just, man... I don't even know who knew who I could even say he sound like. You obviously heard him. He, if you go to go to off the radar freestyle and listen to Sammy Jesus, when I put that freestyle up, they said that's the only person we want to hear you rap with. It's him. That's it's literally that's what they're saying in the comments. He just, you know, I, I can hear. I, I mean, I can hear that, but no, don't, don't, don't stop that wolf pack. Don't, you know, you. He yeah. like okay, okay, yeah, yeah but um. Yeah, that's my God, brother, man. Very, very, I, I love him to death, man. I love him to death. And like I said, he just keep, he never, I can, let me tell you, this, this is the best way to describe him. When he raps for me, I get a headache. <laughs> now nah, he's physically, made, look, like, he, because I'm frowned up, I'm like, what the, what, what is this nigga talking about? You gonna baseball slide a nigga under his car? Like, <laughs> like, like, man. I don't know where the fuck he what what what, what amphetamines, what weed he's smoking. I don't know what he be doing before he write these records. Cause I never really see him write. That's another thing. Mm. I don't never see him writing. Wow. He comes to the studio and he be having his shit together already. I, I we used to write together probably seven, eight years ago. I I seen him get a pin out, but I ain't seen him write nothing down. And I'm not saying he don't physically write it down. I just don't know when the fuck he putting this shit together. Huh. But when he well when he come and he he gonna show out he he definitely show up and show out. It's like it's like it's like um like the graph artist man you never see them you just see yeah. the work. all you see is the work you ain't gonna see them. you ain't gonna see it being painted you know you might see them cans you know you might hear them <laughs> right you ain't gonna see, yeah man I'm telling you yeah he different man Watch that's what's up man uh, th thanks for bringing him to the forefront he's definitely on the radar. Um, yes. we, again, we've been on for a minute. Let's wrap it up. Um, what, what else is coming up for the God? Um, we just gonna, I just want everybody to watch out for the God Squad compilation. Um, that's that's all of the God brothers. That's 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 Rochester, Syracuse, Brownsville. Um, you know, what I'm saying Connecticut connection. We got we got artists, uh, you know, Vegas. We got artists from everywhere on there, and that's what we're doing. And the God, God, uh, God Squad compilation. And we might call it God Brothers. So that's probably what we're gonna end up calling it. Oh, and can I give a big shout out? Big big shout out to DJ Colleen Shannon. That's the voice when you hear "Great God." Mm -hmm. You understand? And then Rose is the one to say "Welcome to God Brothers." She live out in the UK. Shout out! Big shout out to both of them. Big and, shout uh, out to both of them. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's what's up. Um, again, thank you, Great God people. The God is great. Um, we all it up. I, I'm Frank 5D for the rap scene. Um, uh, positive energy activates constant elevation. Be on the lookout for everything great guy has going on. He, he's he's one of those dudes. I, I, we haven't just spoken it up for, for nothing for this for this past 50 minutes. Go check him out. Check out everything God Squad has going on. Check out that new Rock Marciano project, Marciology. Yeah. Um, Marciology. It's all fine. 
he's featured on there. Um, again, thank you, Greg God. We signing out. Great God, I'm right here with Frank 5D, not 3D, Frank 5D. Great God, peace.